Hello, Jim Lerke, owner of Safety Connections. My blurb for the week, as I get lots of requests to talk on a specific uh, topic on leadership, it's tips for leading and understanding the next generation. I wanted to be done uh, and to make it as simple as I could, but I'm telling you, after I, I thought more and more about it and leaving a message, I'm gonna do a two-part series, all right? so I can at least share what I think and feel, and hopefully it makes some sense. First and foremost, here's the biggest things I hear from people who've been in a shop and been employed for many, many years, all right? Uh, here's the first things that come to my mind as far as what I'm hearing. The first, if I could do everything remote, that would be ideal. Uh, if I didn't have to go to work, that would be ideal. If I could get out of college and earn $200,000, that would be ideal. And uh, the last thing would be, when does accountability come in place? Those are the biggest things I hear. Well, then here's where I wanna go as far as my thoughts from there. But that's the biggest things I hear. With the new generation, one has to understand it's very different from baby boomers, millennials. Uh, more, they care more about having a sense of purpose and having a positive impact on society and the environment. Keep that in mind. Just a thought. I see, I came across some survey and I thought you'd find that interesting. It talked about, they did a survey of some 30,000, so that should give us some idea. Uh, the age group was 18 to 35. Young people are being perceived as, what did I just say before? Lazy, impatient, entitled. It's all about me. They're known as, as job uh, hopping generation. Entitlements are known as, uh, or care little about their work. The data, however, also showed this. I thought it's interesting. That it's a different picture. The top two most important criteria of this generation, considering job opportunities are salary, financial compensation, 49.3%, and sense of purpose, impact on society, 40.6%. So keep those things in mind. Co to contribute to improve the state of the world will have to be matched with leaders today in dealing with volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and as well as ambiguity. Here's what we gotta do, all right? So I'm gonna start today. We need a clear vision. Not all leaders, not all leaders or managers. There's a huge difference in, in different groups. But I can tell you this, uh, we may have excelled at doing things one way, however, they may not necessarily be in the right way in leading people today. And I can be a true witness of that, okay? They're, they're usually left out on their own, all right, to become leaders. Well, there's strengths and weaknesses and we gotta help them to find that. And we gotta find that. Being proactive. Uh, I can tell you Unfortunately, it's become impossible with the amount of information today to have a total grip on it. But what, so what am I trying to say? We can't afford to wait for relevant needed information. I'm gonna tell you that. We gotta be prepared as leaders today to act with what information we have or we can gather. We should not be afraid of leading and supporting our teams in order to deliver success. Time is of the essence, we gotta get going. I can also say this in my opinion, some 70% of leaders should be spent managing people and finding ways to developing them instead of doing any kind of criticizing. Primary role of a leader is to make sure that their team members have the resources and capacity to do their jobs while thinking. It's important all right, but to also note that personal and professional development is crucial in developing a strong team.
thus should be a priority in leading a healthy team. That is my message for this week. Next week, we will continue. Take care, everyone.